Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded to have you, that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Luke 22, 31 and 32. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. I'm Don. I thank you, Lord, for your word and your grace upon this word, for life and hope in this word. I ask Holy Spirit that you would fill my mouth with revelation, that you would fill my mouth with hope, that you would fill my mouth with love, that you would fill my mouth with powerful words, and that they would be released powerfully, and that those things would be implanted in all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory. Glory. Faith, my brothers and sisters. Faith. Um, you know, this is the night that uh, <laughs> Peter denied Jesus three times because of his pride. Sometimes we get in pride and, and uh, we think we're walking in faith, but we're really walking in pride. We're not uh, submitting ourselves to God. We're not resisting and, <laughs> and seeing the enemy flee. And our walk is a walk of faith. Simon, Simon, behold, <laughs> Satan is demanded. You know, there, there, there's deeper spiritual implications here, and I want to keep this really simple. It's about our faith about our faith not failing in times of undue stress, in times of darkness in our lives, in times of hopeless situations that we find ourselves in. And we all, like sheep have gone astray, we all find ourselves in a place of struggle from time to time, some more than others. But everybody finds themselves in a place of struggle, in the places where... Uh, Believers are heavily persecuted. Right now, it's it's probably back in the Middle East, but it's in China. It's, it's even rising up in the United States. But their their faith is tested constantly. They're 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 being sifted constantly. The chaff is getting separated from the wheat. The fruit is being released. I spoke about that at the home meeting just a little bit yesterday about being sifted. And we all get sifted from time to time. And, and we all have different levels of what it takes to cause us to be separated from the chaff in our lives. You know, Peter needed that pride to be stripped away from him, that chaff to be <laughs> sifted away from him. So the real fruit could be released so we could go back and begin to strengthen the others by his faith. Because he was a man of great faith. He wasn't a man of fear. But because of the pride in his life, he was allowed to go through that. He wasn't afraid. He cut off the servant's ear. He was going to stand and die with Jesus when they came to get him. He wasn't afraid of what other people were going to say about him. He didn't have that fear. It was the pride. Satan came in and darkened his heart and began to sift him. Do not be surprised by the fiery trials, my brothers and sisters. As something unexpectedly horrible came upon, my paraphrase, but the point here is that we do get sifted from time to time. Those of you who are walking in a hard place right now, Rejoice that it's not going to last forever. Rejoice that God is walking with you through it, not dragging you through it, but walking with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. That when you're done with that trial, a purity will be in you. Fire burns off the things that are impure. Impurities have to go. When they make steel and they begin to, to uh, put all the material together and they heat it up to a <laughs> boiling point, this stuff like called coke comes up on the top of it. A dross comes up on the top of it that they can get rid of. And what remains is pure. When, when they ground uh, wheat into flour, they had to sift out the wheat from the chaff. So the wheat could be grounded into flour so it could be made into food for life. We're being made for food. 
Don't, don't struggle against your trials. Move forward with them. Allow what's going on in your life to produce in you a purity that others don't have, that you can release to other people when they find themselves in the same situation. Maybe not the same depth, maybe it doesn't look the same, but the same kind of situation. I was, uh, when I was 25, I've shared this before, I was attacked by seven guys with clubs. And they began to beat me to death. Literally, they were going to kill me with, with pipes and clubs, according to witnesses. I didn't see them. Because once I got hit, I was down and that was it. Um, but what I heard was relax. And it'll all be over with in a moment. And I thought that was that was the sign that I was going to die. No. The relaxing part was because it was hurting so bad. It was so painful. That had I not relaxed, bones might more bones might have gotten broke. When a baby falls, it doesn't break bones because it rolls. It just turns limp like a limp rag. I know a man who stole a motorcycle, and he was drunk. And he was driving the motorcycle well over 110 miles an hour, and he ran into a concrete pylon on a freeway. And it didn't kill him. It paralyzed him on one side. And the police said that the reason why he didn't die was because he was so relaxed in his drunken state. That's why a lot, a lot of times when, when, when a drunk does get into an accident, they're not, they're not harmed and the other people are because if he would have been sober, he would have stiffened up. He would have tried to resist what was getting ready to come into his uh, field of view. And so the same thing applies to us. When we begin to go through things, we need to roll with it. We need to move with what's coming our way so we can be sifted and so we can turn again and strengthen our brothers and sisters. I want to encourage you today that if you're struggling in an area of your life, begin to give God thanks for that struggle. Begin to enter into an attitude of gratitude for what God's doing in your life even though it's pain. What God is allowing to do in your life is going to create a purity in you that you're going to be life to others, food for others. If we love our lives, we'll lose it. If we hate what's going on around us, we will gain life because we will roll with what it God wants to do in us. I just want to say thanks for coming and sitting with me this morning. You're awesome. I thank you, Lord, for this word this morning. I ask, Lord God, that it would bring power and life to those who are struggling this morning. I release wholeness and peace over my brothers and sisters. And sometimes we have to go through these things, Lord God, in order to get rid of the things that we really hate. So that we can walk into life, Lord God. I just pray, Lord God, that my brothers and sisters, as they go through these things, that their faith would remain strong that they would become life for others. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory, glory, glory. I haven't played my guitar for a couple of days, so I don't know if I'm even going to do anything. Just let me... Ooh, that's way out of tune. All my strings are out of tune. Close enough. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> I just want to play it. I recently went through uh, much struggle in my own life. I feel like that the Lord is uh, turning me back. My 
screen went black. Like I said, I'm not really, uh, Try something here. In this life, I call chaos. Who do I run to? Who do I turn to? Who do I see? I call chaos Who do I run to? Who do I turn to? Who do I seek? It's you Jesus, it's you Glory now if I can get the screen back, praise the Lord. Who do we seek in our time of chaos? And thank you, Lord, for this day. Hey, have an awesome day. We'll see you soon. Bye.